I'm Ken Larson. I just took off my, harvested my 35th crop uh, next to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, in the winter time, I've uh, spent many, many years uh, understanding the history of the wheat board. In Alberta, we've been uh, given a lot of myths about the foundation of the wheat board and how it was how it was founded, and now those myths are being repeated by the federal government. What what the feds and the Alberta government have said for years is the uh, wheat board was imposed on farmers. That's really totally and completely inaccurate. Uh, when the West was settled there was already a mature globalized grain trade which was dominated by about five large corporations electronically connected via telegraph around the world. Starting at about 1890 Western Canadian farmers started to agitate to have a wheat board where they sold their grain together on that global grain market so they could have some control over their product. By 1921, they had managed to get a wheat board, but unfortunately it was taken away at the following crop year, and it, the farmers started to agitate again. They spent from 1921 to 1942 agitating for the, a single death selling wheat board. They succeeded in getting a wheat board passed in Parliament in 1935. That wheat board contained a provision for single death selling by the wheat board. That part of the legislation wasn't proclaimed until the 1942-43 crop year. The reason it was proclaimed then was because by that point war had broken out and the fundamental economics of the world grain market had changed. Our big grain markets in Europe and Asia were gone due to war and the major policy and concern in Ottawa was that grain would go to zero in price because there was no market for it. The United States had closed their border to Canadian grain in 1921 and it hadn't reopened it. So all this grain was captive on the prairies. So we had a billion bushels of grain in storage on the prairies in 1939 and the major policy of concern was who are we going to sell this stuff to? Who's going to pay for it? Because uh, by that point Britain was involved in the war Britain was our major customer for grain and they had no money to pay for it in any event. So the whole idea that the board was put into place because of a War Measures Act to keep grain cheap is simply economically illiterate. But it makes a wonderful myth to uh, promulgate, uh, to spread around in the public to give people the illusion that it was imposed, but it was not. The desire for a wheat board started in 1890 and that is one of the most consistent farm policy issues raised by Western Canadians from that time forward. The people who led the fight to create the Canadian Wheat Board came out of Alberta. It was led by Henry Wisewood, Irene Parleby, who was actually part of the famous five who uh, had women declared as persons through their famous court case. They were the people that led the fight to create the Canadian Wheat Board. So that's, that's the real history of our Wheat Board.